Hey guys, I just want to let you know before we get into this episode that we've partnered with Band Builder Academy. Band Builder Academy is the number one place to grow your music career. Run by top label manager and Sony Vice President Todd McCarthy. So, you know it's worth it. Enter promo code CONCERTS at checkout to receive 10% off membership. Hi, we're the Black Hat Bones from South Africa. And you are listening to the Concerts That Made Us. Is everybody in? Is everybody in? The show is about to begin. Welcome to the podcast, Conscience That Made Us. Interviews and stories, tales from the bus We love taking you back to when it all went down The greatest live shows and that cheering crowd sound It's concerts, concerts that made us Concerts that made us dot com On this episode I'm chatting with Garrett and Casey from Black Cat Bones, a great blues rock band from South Africa. They've got funk, feeling, groove and much much more. They released their latest album Book of Miriam on July 29th and you're going to hear all about it. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. Wash your hands and greet your loved ones, dear. Cancel all your plans, gather your belongings while you may. And say goodbye now, say goodbye to the light of day. Gotta out of the kingdom, gotta lot more to say. Gotta ask forgiveness, lead me by the hand and get away. And kiss your friends now, one last time. Look up to the sky and say goodbye And from here on out, we all go to sleep and Shut our eyes now to the company we keep We got a lot of the kingdom, I got a lot more to say I got to ask forgiveness, lead me by the hand and get away I got a lot of the kingdom, I got a lot more to say to ask forgiveness, lead me by the hand and get away. Well, the light's the same for all of us, like a prison alone. Saying Garrett, you're very welcome to concerts that made us. How you doing, Brian? I'm delighted to have you guys here now. We opened the show with your song Lungs. It's off your latest album. Would you like to tell us about it? Oh well, um, I 
Okay, it's all good, Gary. <laughs> um, definitely one of our heavier tracks of the album. Um, we went tried to go with a, a sort of fresh direction this album and compared to the previous albums. Added a little bit more, you know, of our softer <laughs> romantic <laughs> side. <laughs> and uh, I, I, I guess lungs is the lungs is the. We are still the Black Cat Bones. We can still throw it down. Yeah. And oh, and the, the fun little fact is that this riff for, for Lungs was actually written about four or five years ago. Uh, myself and Andre still jammed it out way back when. And uh, like it never kind of kind of suited the album we were working with at, on the time, or at the time. And uh, yo, since Casey joined in, we had, like revamped it and now it became this like epic funk rock and roll banger. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. As I mentioned, it's from your latest album, Book of Miriam. What was the process like from, you know, conception up to release? Um, rushed. <laughs> <laughs> right. I was uh, you never seem to have enough bloody time for these things. And we were, you know, we set ourselves a deadline and we stuck to that deadline. Yeah, so I, uh, luckily, I, I guess in a weird way, we had lockdown, right, Gary? Yeah, so we could, we, could, we could only but write this album. <laughs> <laughs> that was pretty much the only thing that we were capable of doing in three years, you know, besides the odd sneaky party or gig here and there. Yeah, yeah. So, the, but the, the process itself was great. Uh, Gary, Gary and I actually live tracked this whole album, which was epic. I uh, always wanted to do that. And uh, Gary played on the coolest vintage. Kit, tell us about that, Gary. Because damn, that yeah, man, cool. we like we we found this like epic, epic like nineteen sixty. I think it was like a nineteen sixty five Gretsch uh, broadcaster kit, and it was just like it suited the the vibe of the the, the songs that we were going for and the sound. And uh, yeah, our producer Matt Matthew Fink, the way we recorded it was absolutely phenomenal. We really captured like the rawness of it, and the, the, the you can really like hear the old sound. Like you like it's difficult to explain, but it really like you can hear the old drum sound in it, you know. Yeah, let's say vintage tones, I suppose you could say. <laughs> correct, lots, yeah, correct. Lots of, lots of that stuff. But, but yeah, it was also cool to live track as well. That's the first time I've ever done that. So um and you know, there's mistakes in there. If you listen close enough, you can hear them. And I I dig that. I thought that, that was that was really cool. The pressure was on Gary and I were in there for like three days. <laughs> Sweating. <laughs> Two days actually, I lie. <laughs> yeah, two days. Two days, yeah. So the rest of the guys in the band got off easy is what you're saying. Yeah, something like that. Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think I, I think Andre was in studio the most. So actually I think we got off easy. <laughs> <laughs> For anybody that's, you know, never heard you guys before, something stands out. It stood out for me anyway, is you know, funk, groove, and feeling. Those three things really come across in the songs. How do you guys, you know, how did that, how did you find your sound? Yeah, I think, I think uh, that, like, that kind of sound really, like, came in, uh, when, like, as Casey joined the band. Because, I mean, Casey was, Casey's been with us for, like, about four years now. And Casey comes from a big, a big uh, funk, funk background, if you can call it that. And uh, yeah, just his natural flavor combined with our like the, the more rocky stuff, combining those two, that's this is the product that we got. And uh, um, everyone kind of everyone's sound kind of like comes through the album, and you can get the, these people, but together it's a bit more of a like you say a funk blend uh, of, of, of 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 a sound. Yeah, I think Gary is also low key like the best hip hop drummer in South Africa <laughs> because it's like simple grooves. I think that that is simplicity. Let's just put it that way. I think that throughout all the instruments has really come something that we focused on was just, and I know Andre was fanatical about this, but it was just not overdoing anything. And, uh, you know, we didn't have to shred a solo for six minutes. You know, uh, it, everyone worked really hard to just. Uh, simplify and get yeah, everything play less, you know, the bare <laughs> essence of the, the tunes. 
Well, at least that was the attempt. Maybe there was a little bit of uh, indulgement here. And there. <laughs> like the you know, the whole thing was like how to learn, how to play less, like learning how to play less. If that makes sense, you know. And yeah, and I think groove and funk, and, you know, and soul and stuff like that. It lives there, you know. It lives in that minimalist sort of vibe. And yeah, I think I think everyone just pulled, you know, pulled out all the stops on this one, pretty much. Yeah, yeah. Well, it turned out perfectly anyway. But uh, how has the reception been from the fans? Oh, phenomenal! Absolutely. Now the launch has been epic so far. We've um, charted on a bunch of radio stations here in South Africa, done some international interviews, uh, <laughs> like this one. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And we got we like really getting like booked for some like. Uh, festival lineups that we would have never been like booked for in the past. You know, it's like really open doors in the in a different like sort of genre of uh, of, of festivals as well. So that's a great thing. Yeah, totally. yeah. Jeez, that's uh, that must be exciting. Would you be apprehensive or nervous now about playing such large gigs? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> there's no <laughs> nerves. No nerves. Gary, would you be nervous? <laughs> Oh, I'm nervous, man. nervous in my life. <laughs> <laughs> I'm su- I'm sweating on the inside, boys. On the inside, butterflies on the inside. <laughs> <laughs> One question I love asking bands, you know, when you're after releasing a good few albums and it's time to come up with a new album, how do you find the sweet spot of, you know, it's something new, but it's familiar enough to your sound that you keep older fans engaged, but you can find newer fans as well. A, a great question. I mean, that was that was this whole album, Gary. Okay? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. And that, that once again, we go back to the the, the, the like, bringing everyone's like own sound and like combining it. And uh, with Casey involved now as well, it still sounds like the Black Eyed Bones, but it sounds like a mature Black Eyed Bones. It sounds like really like the black at bones now who would have thought that i would make anything more mature <laughs> <laughs> yeah the, the the youngster for the band obviously made the most mature sound <laughs> <laughs> but I, I i think what we also strive to do and again if andre was here he would immediately be talking a whole lot about this right but we 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 really did set, set out with a goal at the start of the album and you know uh i think credit to matthew fink our producer for just keeping that golden thread you know that winds through all of the songs and you know we aimed for that but didn't necessarily hit it at in in you know in each in every song and matt is just a genius for weaving everything together into you know this uh the end result which you know yeah in my opinion came out wonderfully yeah yeah so the struggle is real to answer your question, but, <laughs> uh, but I think having, having a clear goal, having a clear goal and writing with intent and, you know, uh, jamming it out with intent and a goal in mind really helped, you know, and I think yeah, we can thank Just Music for that, our record label, because, uh, you know, uh, if it weren't for them, we wouldn't have sort of, I don't think we would have as, wouldn't have forced ourselves so specifically into uh, that golden thread. Yeah, yeah. And you guys have the title of one of South Africa's hardest working bands. How do you go about getting a title like that? Wow, I think that like that came sure, that comes right from the beginning of the of the, the band's existence. I mean, like uh at that point it was like everyone had to gig in order to make an income, you know, like there's like you had to do it. If you didn't do it, you, you don't eat, man. So <laughs> Um, now obviously everyone's got a bit of like a side hustle going in here and there uh, but we still like our goal is to play as many shows a week or a month as possible you know like so we we literally like we just got back from a tour and we're leaving for a tour now again in the next week or so so uh, we most of it like most of the time we like all love it and this is exactly what we want to do and uh, yeah to go from there like we, we like there's no breaks we just want to jam yeah, we we just started we just started playing a ZZ Top cover in our set, but I think they say it best: is we got to get paid, man. <laughs> That's it. So I think that you know the hard work that title definitely comes from Andre and Kurbis, you know, 
they're the founding members of the Black Cat Bones. And like Gary said, I mean, they've put, what, what's it now, 14 years, 15 years, Gary? 15 years, 15 years. 15 years of hard grind. And I don't know if you've ever been to South Africa, but it's fucking enormous. It's so big. So what they did, what a lot of other bands weren't necessarily doing, especially at that scale, was driving everywhere. They toured all the places that no one used to go to. And, you know, in these small towns in the middle of South Africa, the kids there aren't exposed to any rock and roll or anyone because no one goes there. And what Andre and Kurbis did and the previous members of the Black Cat Bones was they went there. They went to all of the places nonstop. Every year they returned. So I think that, yeah, that title definitely comes from those – and. Uh, those early kilometers put in, you know, <laughs> you can put it that way. Yeah, that's actually a a great way to, you know, get exposure for the band and to get new fans as driving places that nobody else goes to. It's uh, it's kind of hard to imagine in a country like Ireland because, you know, you could drive across the length and breadth of Ireland in about two and a half hours. You know, it's actually <laughs> tiny. Yeah, it's a, yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, so every go is great. What would that take you, Gary? Fifth? Like 18 yeah, hours? I mean, hours? Yeah, like six, 15, 16 hours, maybe. 15 hours, uh, yeah. No, hey, maybe, yeah, maybe even close to 20, actually. No, I think maybe like close to, yeah, if you do the full breadth. <laughs> mm. That's crazy. Yeah, that is crazy. Hours. So, Turing gets Ks. So, what, the last tour we went on was 6,600 Ks in three weeks. Jesus. Was that just driving or did you fly? That's just driving. Oh, man. Just driving. Two cars, five, six guys, then drive. You must have a pretty good mechanic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they live in Brack Bad. <laughs> so, <laughs> so we'll jump back to 2007 when the band was forming. Would you like to tell the listeners a bit about how the Black Cat Bones came into existence? You know, I actually asked Kurvis this the other day, Gary. Hey, do, you, do you know how, how Kurvis remembers meeting Andre? No. <laughs> okay. I have no so, idea. This is now Kubis de Kock Jr., the singer for the Black Apples, right? He uh, he is from right, where, where is he from? Froblesdal. Yeah, 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 something is, like that. Which is one of these in the middle of nowhere towns, South Africa. Okay, he eventually ends up moving to Pretoria many years later. He is a drummer at that time and a sound engineer, right? He hears about uh, two guys, Andre being one of them, Andre Creel, the guitarist for the Black Apples. He is about him and another guy that need a drummer to, uh, you know, for a gig that they're putting together. So Kurvis gets all the cash that he has together, gets the petrol, does the whole mission, gets to the rehearsal spot, sets up his drums, so on and so forth. And Andre Creel <laughs> ditches on the on the uh, jam session or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so Kurvis is super pissed off with this so-called Andre Creel character. <laughs> and then hold basically holds a grudge until finally meeting him <laughs> and figuring out that he's a lacquer o and then basically they started a band from that point onwards. <laughs> so it actually comes from Underfield ditching on a jam session, let's put it that way. <laughs> right, right, not one and then they were, in, they were in many bands before finally forming the Black Capotes. And you guys, when did you come into the into the fold? I've been um Wow, I think, yeah, we spoke about it actually on, on Saturday. I mean, I've been with them for about seven years now, close to seven eight, years at least. Yeah, seven, seven, eight, seven years. Yeah, so I like, funny enough, like, the way I kind of got into the band was um, I, in my, in my hometown, I used to like run a little venue, like a little music venue. Which is multi, and, uh, yeah, a mountain small, town. Yeah, smaller, <laughs> smallest small town in the world. Mountain town. <laughs> And uh, I actually like got a got a, a, a connection by another another friend of mine. Who also, he's also involved in bookings and stuff. And he said, "Yeah, Yo, you got to book this band. You got to get this band to come through." So I was like, "Okay, great, man." Uh, eventually, like find a find a little gap when they were on tour at that point, heading down to a, one of the major cities. And uh, yeah, I just made a connection. So like, man, we can. Do you want to stop over here, jam a bit? Um, uh, obviously, it's like a little bit of a stopover, so I like kind of persuaded them on uh, uh, mom's great cooking as well. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then uh, yeah, booked them. They came, became one of the 
like super super tight with them. Uh, the and the, at that point there was actually just the two of them. Like it was, it was Andre and and Kerbis just doing an acoustic, acoustic tour, and they were like the next then the very next day was a gig which was about two hours drive away from where I had them, and uh, they knew I was a drummer, so they were, cause like they were like do you want to come jam the the show with us the next day? So I was like fuck yeah let's do this man. So we ran through the ran through the tunes a couple of times and then uh, I just went on tour with him the next day. <laughs> I love that. It's like I'm not just going to book the band; I'm going to join the band. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm the, the captain now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the captain. I'm the drummer now. <laughs> and Casey, what about yourself? Uh, I was in a. I was. I'm. I'm still in another band, a very odd little funk band called Straight Jackal. And we played gigs together. Uh, Straight Jackal and Black Hat Bones played gigs together quite a bit, or every now and then. And um, Black Hat Bones' old bassist, Chris Van der Vault, uh, uh, joined a, the heaviest South African metal band in the world, Volvedinia, right? Or Dania. I can't know how to pronounce it. Uh, yeah, impossible to pronounce. But they are, they are epic and huge, and they tour the world. So you know he, uh, he had to uh, he had to leave the backup bands, and I believe he put what was the story again? He gave through X three suggestions or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So myself, myself, and then uh, Chris at the time, obviously now being in the rhythm section of the band, we like had to kind of fight. Like, yeah, and like Chris was my friend. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. So sift, sift through all like the potential bass players, you know, like who would we actually like want in like. Uh, eventually, it came down to like three three options, and then um, the final decision was actually. <laughs> <the> <laughs> no, nah, we, we won't. We won't mention them. We won't mention them. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, the final decision came down to to Casey, and then, uh, uh, yeah, obviously, I did like also kind of like put my head around like who like as a drummer, who would I kind of like gel with the most, like what kind of basses I gel with the most. And uh, Casey and I were friends yeah, already the at the fun. time, and uh, yeah, then Casey got the call. The funk compelled you. <laughs> <laughs> and Casey, was it an easy decision? Was did you jump oh, at yeah, the chance? Yeah, it was uh, easy as well. Yeah, I I, I I loved the bones for for ages. So definitely one of my favorite, one of my favorite South African bands, without a doubt. And we had played gigs together, you know, quite often before that. So I knew that they were, everyone was cool guys. And yeah, it was a no brainer. No brainer. Yeah, brilliant, brilliant. We'll we'll jump into your own personal music history for a bit now. From concerts you've attended, what concerts would you say have made you guys? What made you want to be musicians? Wow, that's a great question. What made me want to become a musician? What made me a musician? I don't know, guys. Can you can you take it? I'm like I'm trying to think now. Um, I can't, no, that 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 was too long ago. I can't remember <laughs> not ever wanting to be a musician. Yeah, but I yeah. can say I can say great concerts that I've been to. If you guys if you want to hear some cool shit, this one time was at a festival, Opi Copy, right? In a questionable state of mind, let's put it that way, and caught this Israeli band called Tatran. I don't know if you've ever heard of them. Instrumental, acid, jazz, madness. But one of the cooler bands I've ever seen, ever, ever love. And still to this day. And nothing has ever come close. And that might have been my state of mind, but still, <laughs> it was definitely one of the uh, concerts that changed the game for me. It was, I never, ever viewed a concert the same way after that day. So, yeah, check them out. Touch Run. Super, super, super cool band. What's your favorite concert, Gary? I'm taking all this. <laughs> <laughs> I'm man, like, nah. Yes, there's there's quite a few, man. But like, in terms of like drumming and like drumming uh, inspirations, man. Like one of the concerts that really blew me away unexpectedly was uh, the Dave Matthews Band, watching them live. And obviously, obviously, you know, like I don't know if if, if you guys know the uh, Carter Both the drummer for Dave Matthews Band, but he is phenomenal like one of my favorite favorite inspirations and like funny enough before that i actually had one of his instructional dvds you know at, at that point when dvds were still around 
Uh, and I was like, yes, man, I get this thing. I'm going to start jamming. Like, Carter Beaufort, man, watch me. Give me like six months and I'll be like the best drummer. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, which like, I mean, like I watched the DVD twice and I kind of like threw it away. You know? <laughs> like, like, it, was, it was a little bit too hard. But uh, anyways, then like a couple of years later, I got a chance to watch them live and they actually blew me away like very unexpectedly. I was like absolutely like speechless. Yeah, that, is, that is unexpected. Yeah, yeah. Jeez. And um, from your own gig point of view, then, what gigs do you think have made you guys as a band? Hmm. That is a good question. <laughs> yeah, it's quite tough because, like, all our gigs are, like, so, so different. Like, we, like, we literally, like, we'll, like, the one day we'll go from playing, like, a, a massive festival stage with in front of thousands of people in, and then the next day is, like, a small, intimate acoustic show uh, in front of like 50 people, you know, so it's like, yeah, and all great. Well, yeah, yeah, it's like, ah, oh, man, you kind of take a bit of, a bit of everything, like a bit of like things from all the different shows and like, like you know, like put them together and like, that's exactly why we love doing what we do. Um, it's difficult to say like what I prefer, like massive stage or like the small intimate stuff. <laughs> Everything's got its moment. Yeah, they're all great. The, 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 I'm just getting like flashbacks, like <laughs> PTSD flashbacks of all <laughs> Great gigs, yeah. No, they're all fucking great. Every single, every single gig is important and great. If you had to pick a highlight, then one thing that has happened to you that you think is almost defining when it comes to gigs, then does anything stick out? <laughs> I've got, I've got like a not a defining moment, but one moment that I'll I'll never forget is <laughs> it had nothing to do with the band itself, but as we are playing a show. A guy at a festival, like one of the bigger festivals in the, in the country, out of the blue, a guy comes running on stage, but naked, <laughs> with a, a long ass <laughs> piece of toilet paper hanging from his asshole, and it's being <laughs> lit on the other end. So he's got like this long black like, tail coming out, a long tail of toilet paper that's being lit at the end, and he has to run as fucking fast as he can across this thing in order to get keep the flame away from his ass. <laughs> During the set, like obviously, and the show is still like we didn't even skip the beat, man. The show went on, but it was a defining moment for me that I'll never forget. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. oh man! How did you not like just stop and be like, "What the hell is that?" <laughs> that just shows you what kind of level of professional guy. Yeah, he is. <laughs> <laughs> he's the rock. <laughs> oh, oh, anything like that jump out for you, Casey? Uh, yes, I'm. I'm having to filter some of my memories, as I'm sure you can imagine. <laughs> so nothing particular is jumping out of me. <laughs> right, right. And keeping on the same kind of rhythm, we'll flip it around. Is there a worst experience you guys have had on stage or at a gig, and how did you overcome it? <laughs> uh, yes. Gary? Yeah, man. I remember playing a show like I won't I won't name festivals or any specific person or whatever. <laughs> but in like the moral of the story, like we we just got booked for the wrong lineup and the wrong crowd, and we started playing this of like this this like heavy rock and roll vibes, and it wasn't suitable. Like the crowd wasn't having it, and eventually it just turned. It, I'd like literally like it started with one ice block flying over in, into like into like where I was in the drum riser. Then it was a cup and then it was a can and eventually thousands of ice blocks and cans just like flying at us, you know, like we need to get off that stage right at that oh, moment. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, rock and roll doesn't go down well in some communities. <laughs> really? <laughs> Even nowadays. Way. Even nowadays, yeah. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> you didn't expect that you were going into battle then when you began that uh, that gig? <laughs> Absolutely not. I was like using a symbol as a as a like a shield almost. <laughs> <laughs> oh god, that that is a pretty bad one, all right. Yeah, the, the bush is a crazy place. <laughs> I had one in my head now until Gary said his one. And but, but now I realize that I, I realize that I can't probably say uh, festivals names and stuff. Um uh, and I, I, I can talk about. <laughs> oh no, damn! I can, no, I can't, no, I can't think of it. Leave me, skip. <laughs> <laughs> so, 
we've heard the best, we've heard the worst. What do you guys think goes into making the ultimate stage show, the ultimate performance for a band? I'd say definitely, obviously, first of all, like knowing what you're going to be doing, like knowing the songs. I mean, once you, like if you know the songs, like if you're 100 percent comfortable with the songs, then you can kind of like start adding more like a flamboyant flavor to it or like adding some extra things you know but like bare like the, the bare bone comes comes from knowing the songs and playing the songs flipping well you know um that's that's my most important thing like i always like to uh make sure my playing is top notch all the time and then what if i'm very comfortable with that then i can think of like okay cool let me do like a stick trick yeah that's this part or you know or like we'll add some some like some uh, uh, visual aspects and uh, funny cool intros and outros of the, of the set. Case, what do you think? I think I agree with all of that. Yes, you got to be. I, I think the, I think the reason that I think the reason that we can do it, and I think we do do it, is because we play so many gigs, right? We're like well practiced. When you when you stay on top of your game, like you're saying, when you when you're practicing every day and playing every day, it does make it much easier to put on a on a good show, right? Mm, but yeah. I think it, 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 even before that, Bones was established as a live band. So everything was always worked out and, uh, you know, uh, live was taken into account with everything. So straight from the writing process, they is sort of where I think the source starts. Is that it's uh, they are if you like for argument's sake if you enjoy the album come and fucking see it live I promise you it's ten times better actually there's just something that we do live that it cannot be cannot be captured or it, it, you, it has to be experienced right even if you go take the dry recordings that the the source is gone and I'll give that credit mainly to Quibus he is a, an excellent frontman and he ensnares people with he like puts a spell <laughs> on people i swear i've seen people stare <laughs> stare into that guy's eyes like you can see that they are gone they're not there you know <laughs> and, he, and he, i don't know what he does but he's a he's an incredible incredible frontman yeah yeah i love that though i'm always saying you know when you go to a gig personally me anyway i'm not going to hear a perfect recreation of the album you know, I want that little bit of extra at it, you know, whether it's the banter with the crowd or even, you know, the mistakes. It all adds to the perfect stage show. Definitely. And and Andre Creel is the biggest uh, sort of advocate for this. But if he can grab a, an extra guitarist that's hanging around backstage or whatever and bring him on for an impromptu solo or something like that, he's going to make it happen. Uh, <laughs> It, literally anyone that's backstage will work them into the set list and off goes a, a improvised gig. So I think that, like you say, that's definitely an element of it. There must be surprise, right? It's yeah. not meant to be the same thing. It's not meant to be replicated. Exactly. Exactly. I'm just getting images now of like a load of musicians backstage running and hiding so they're not dragged on stage. <laughs> no, hiding, hiding. <laughs> no, definitely hide from under a grill. You got it. <laughs> Especially oh, if, you, if you pissed backstage and he goes, come on, <laughs> run. <laughs> we just came back from a festival. Can I just say, Gary and I were trapped like this, right? Festival in Hogsback. Hogsback is a. A, a beautiful tiny town on top of a mountain in South Africa, right? But it's like 900 k's away from us. They shut down the whole town for a blues festival. And at the final end of the night, Gary and I were meant to be the band for all of these blues guitarists and their shred fest. Lord. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want to yeah, we're like, uh, we're like, we're trying to count on one, on like one, on like one hand, like how many times are we going to hear a woke up this morning in the in that set, you know? <laughs> <laughs> it actually turned out to be such a flipping jewel. Really? <laughs> yeah. Go if you ever in South Africa, go to Hogsback. Right. The, 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 the uh, oh, don't worry about it. Go to Hogsback. <laughs> <laughs> As a band, what do you hope to achieve through your music? Ooh. Money. 
<laughs> I didn't realize we were being totally honest. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, it, 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 I mean that in the best way, actually, though, right? Is if we can take a, if we can, uh, you know, survive through just make having fun, then a fucking man. Mm. Like if we, you know, I, I don't, I don't see anything wrong with that. And because it, it, you simply must create music, it's too fun. Right, so if we can make a living off of it at the same time, what a pleasure! Why the fuck would you not do that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I can't, I can't, I can't. I've asked myself this question multiple times, but I can't see any way other. <laughs> it's got to be this way. It's one of them things that even if you could just make enough to pay your bills and then have fun playing music, that'd do. That'll yeah, do just fine. You know? That will do just fine. But look, touring the world would also wouldn't be bad either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'll take it. <laughs> <laughs> what about you, Gary? Yeah, I, I agree with Casey one hundred percent. I also think, like, literally, um, our next goal will be literally like to get more uh, book for more uh, international lineups. Hopefully, see some amazing countries like Ireland itself. That'll be absolutely insane. I'd love, love to see that that area. And yeah, literally like touring the world, man, getting booked for lineups, playing our hot set. See, but there there are two there are two differences, right? That's that's what that's what we want to achieve in order to keep on doing the thing, right? But I think perhaps the question you were asking is what do you hope to achieve with the writing? Eh? With the music itself. Yeah, yeah. Right? That that obviously has nothing to do with money. That's why I say <laughs> you simply must. Mm. The re- the reason that I, the reason that we get up in the morning and play the instruments that we play and create is because you must you are compelled to by other forces <laughs> go that way. If I don't play bass guitar, I become the grumpiest asshole that ever lived. If we don't have a gig, check under a grill. If we don't have a gig, <laughs> he's just the grumpiest person, and that shit is inexplicable. So. We are just getting it out. It can't. It can't stay in. And I think if you go listen to the album, it, what, it, what a blatant theme is also being positive, right? There's not putting out. We're not putting out negative shit, right? They are low key, like super positive messages, like every single one of those fucking songs. <laughs> maybe, maybe with the exception of Mayor. <laughs> <laughs> which is just madness but I, I think i think that uh, that is also a cool thing that i really enjoy it's just not um there's enough bullshit negativity going on in the world we don't have to add to it we kept that fucking like funky rock and like positive somewhat <laughs> even though some of the sounds are sad as fuck they are still on a you know of a positive note yes positive vibes you made me think of something there when you said uh, you're grumpy as hell when you can't get it out or you you can't play a gig. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> but how do you deal with, you know, the feeling of, say, on a Friday night or Saturday night, you're on stage in front of a massive crowd. Everyone is digging your music. Then the following morning, you're getting up and it's kind of back to reality. We get the hey, that has the tour blues, Gary. That's the fucking real thing. Yeah, they call it like we call it the the, the post tour depression, man, or the, maybe even like we can maybe call it the post gig depression. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, man. Like, like I probably, I think like just to live off the positivity that they came from the night before and know that or strive to recreate it at the very very next show. If, if it so happens to be the next day or the next week, like you're always trying to push yourself to be better and like really like. Get that that same like sort of energy that was going on, recreate it, and some you know like really like make it even more better. So sometimes though, after a gig, after right, I actually do like just being alone. <laughs> really, <laughs> there's, when it's so many people, it does get a little bit tiring sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> like just go frying a steak right by yourself, <laughs> 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 and having like a beer, one beer by yourself, and they're going to bed. <laughs> nice, nice. Anyway, like Gary was saying, post to it, post to depression is a real thing. <laughs> it's killer. You, I, mean, I think it's just because you have so much fun for so many days in a row. 
Yeah, yeah. But it's, you know, back to like you guys were saying, you work so hard, you're always touring, you know, in that sense, you're kind of, you're lucky that you always seem to have a gig coming up so you can look forward to the next gig and focus on that instead of say, you know, you play a gig and you don't have another one for six or 10 months, you know? You know, that was locked on it, Gary. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It was I, like, I was like starting to like, like scare myself. Like, what am I going to do? Like, you know, what do I do? I can only like practice for myself so long, you know, before I go, I start like going absolutely crazy. Um, but yeah, man. Yeah, that was, <laughs> yeah, I really, really don't hope it ever happens again. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but, yeah. you know, touch wood. We will blaze, blaze our booking agent, put it that way. <laughs> he's, yeah. he's, he's a great, great, great man. <laughs> <laughs> and when you guys in years time, when you reach, you know, old age, you can no longer handle the touring or be able to hold the drumsticks or hold the bass. And you look back, what needs to happen for you guys to say, yeah, we did it. I'm I'm perfectly happy with how the career turned out. Wow, I'm man. really happy, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like if, if, if I can see our music's like, like our music still like going on and living like a living uh, organism type thing. If I can see people still listening to our music and cherishing it and like literally taking a positive message from every single song, I think that'll be like one of the, you know, like, I'll be like cool, my work is done. Yeah, I'm happy, you know. And maybe like a little, a little, a little gold, re- a gold record on the wall wouldn't, you know, wouldn't be the bad thing either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Casey, what about you? Anything to add? Oh, uh, no, I could die tomorrow. I'd be stoked, man. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I would love to tour. Though. I need to tour the world. That that is a. If it doesn't happen, I wouldn't be bummed. <laughs> I wouldn't. Be, I wouldn't be too bummed. But yeah, can we we need to come to Ireland, bro. Make it happen. Definitely, definitely. I feel like you're the type of person you know. You're just carefree, happy go lucky. Anything could happen, and it just won't tear you down. That's pretty much sums up Casey to the T. <laughs> pretty much. That's <laughs> and. Before we move on to the last couple of questions, then what's on the cards for the rest of the year for you guys? We've got a we've got quite a few uh, quite a few tours booked. Uh, not very long tours, maybe like a couple of days here or there, but like away from home, uh, a weekend plus a few days type thing. Um, we've got really really great shows coming up. We're playing like funny like little art festival gigs. Uh, we've got a couple of great. Uh, 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 gigs with another like other great like really really cool artists uh oh name drop he, he won't uh, have a clue who you're talking about this is about just about this is just about us we're not name dropping we're not we're not we're not giving any 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 like extra air time. okay just tell me what the name is because um, <laughs> and uh yeah, man. Like, and then obviously we've got our annual like December tour, which is like uh, our summer tour, and that like runs for all the space of like two to three weeks. And we've got already like already booked book now some insane gigs. First is uh, Music Kitchen, right? We're going to PE. Then we're going to Nasna. Then we're going yeah, to yeah, yeah. doing doing the Garden Route tour. That's the first Garden Route tour that's coming up now. Damn, it's going to be so good. You have to come to South Africa. Come to it with us. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. And when can, I know you've just released the album, but when can people expect new music? Will it be years? Wow. I think, yeah, I think yeah, like, Andre like, joked the other day. Did you hear me? He's like, Bones, pre-production started. No. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty sure like we'll, we'll r- r- run the, the, the tour r- the remaining of the year. And then pr- I'm pretty sure like from like January, once we do our big annual tour, we go for like normally like after that we do it back at like a two week break type thing just to like chill out. Once we come back, I'm pretty sure there's gonna be a bit of a an itch to to get together and write some jams. So I'm pretty sure we'll start doing some new stuff from early next year, and then probably hopefully put it out by the middle of next year, maybe towards the end of it, maybe. Brilliant, brilliant. I was hoping you'd say next year. I was kind of, I was like, I hope these aren't guys now that are going to make us wait for another five years or something before we hear something new. It normally takes about like a two-year gap, eh, Gary. 
What is yeah, it? Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Eh? Ten years in office, two years. Yeah, so probably, yeah, probably the album will be out in two years. But yeah, we there's going to be lots of little sneaky installments, you know, leading up to that two years. Oh, there's lots to be done. Brilliant. We'll move on to the last couple of questions. So everybody gets these, so you can't get off the podcast till you answer. I'm afraid. If there was a band or musician from history you could see in concert for one night only, who would it be? John Bonham. Right. I like the quick, quick response. Straight, 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 <laughs> man. No doubt. Yeah, yeah. I'm not surprised. I, I don't even a- need to ask why. <laughs> <laughs> mm. No, Casey James Brown for you, boy. I was gonna say James, you know, but yeah, I'll say James. I'll go with James. James Brown. You gotta, but you, but it has to be young James Brown. I, I don't want old, uh, you know, <laughs> old crimpy James Brown. I want that <laughs> fucking young one. LSD he, James was a, Brown. he was a fucking lunatic. Yeah, yeah. That that must have been yeah, like in a small club. Hey, James Brown in like a small club, two hundred people. That's the James Brown I want to see. That'd be crazy, absolutely yeah. crazy. On hell Actually, of a gig, it's actually it must have been mad. <laughs> what about James Brown and John Bonham on drum on drums? <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> the race of people disaster. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and like put Prince on guitar, and jeez, uh, yeah, well, we could add it. We could like make a massive super group of like corruption. Yeah. James <laughs> yeah. Jameson on bass. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the next one, then, if you had to spend twenty four hours locked inside a room with any musician or artist from history, who would it be? Oh, Michael Jackson. I'd love to pick that guy's brain. Yo, that's Jackson. interesting. <laughs> uh, hello, Gary. <laughs> uh, Jackson. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, you must have a story to tell, though. I'm sure. <laughs> yeah, what would you like to or hope to learn from Michael Jackson? The moonwalk. Good answer. <laughs> <Hey>! <laughs> while whilst, yeah, whilst playing while, whilst playing drums, I want to moonwalk. That is the best answer I've ever, <laughs> ever, 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 ever. <laughs> Oh god! Oh, <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> uh. Who would I? Oh, fuck, I don't know. I don't have a good answer for this. I'd like to say I'd like to say James Brown as well, but I don't think you can actually talk to James. <laughs> you wouldn't be able to understand him, I'd say. Yeah, he's like, <laughs> how do you do that? <laughs> it's, it's a man's world. Yeah, it's a man's world. <laughs> I don't want to talk about that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> no, I'll, I'll stick with it. James Brown, through and through. Okay, okay, and I have to ask, what would you hope to learn from James Brown? Once you could understand them. Out of boogie. <laughs> Good answer. Good answer. No better <laughs> man to teach you. Agreed. Uh, Gary and I both, we both got, we need, we need, we need to be better dancers. <laughs> that, <laughs> <what you've> <laughs> that may make you think that Gary and I are bad at dancing, but the opposite is actually true. <laughs> all right, right. You just want to be better, hey, Gary. <laughs> You'll have to make a, a music video, you guys dance and so to prove it to the world. Oh, yes. <laughs> and In, interpretive, like ribbon dancing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. And the next one if there was a song to appear on the soundtrack to your life that you think would sum you up, what would it be? Ooh. I'll go, the yeah, Pusher Man. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Damn. Wow. I can't even beat that, man. Wow. Um this came to me. Jeez, man. <laughs> I'm stumped. Yeah, I'm like really like it's <laughs> man's world. <laughs> 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 Living in America. <laughs> <laughs> Only on such a from now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly, man. <laughs> Jeez. Oh. I'll, go, I'll probably like go for something like Welcome to the Jungle. Right. Like it. Like it. Like is, it. Great it's great song. Good, badass. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. You're, uh, if that's your answer, you're going to love the intro to this podcast. So. It's nice. Looking forward to it. And... 
The final one to switch it around, keep you on your toes. Is there something I should have asked you guys? Ooh. Should have asked us what our names were. <laughs> you, should, you should have asked you should have asked me what am I drinking right now? Okay, what are you drinking? What are you drinking? Uh a phenomenal pint of uh uh castle lager. <laughs> nice. One of uh, the local, guys, local guys have castle lager in <laughs> Castle, Gary. Goodness sake. Nice, nice. You have castle lager. What's, what's your what, what's your go to beer? Lager. Yeah. Uh that is a tough one. I'm not really a lager drinker, but it'd probably be Budweiser or Corona. Pretty boring, I know. I'm more of a, <laughs> you know, I drink probably JD and Coke, or you know what's actually really nice? Gin and Lemon. Yeah, now you're talking. Yeah. We, yeah, we drink something called brandy. Blah, blah, blah. And right. you drink brandy and Coke. <laughs> <laughs> you're going you're gonna, to you're gonna have to go to South Africa and we're going to give you brandy and Coke. Right. Oh, it's definitely on the cards to get over to South Africa anyway. And a black label is Amelie. Nice, nice. Right, guys, it's been an absolute blast. I've really enjoyed chatting with you now. It was a hell of a lot of fun. Thank you so much, Brian. Likewise, so bud. Likewise.
Why, hello there. I'm about to make a prediction. And that prediction is, you like podcasts. If that's true, then make your way over to the Cognitive Discourse, where we have monologues, short stories, and open discussions. And every now and then I get a little ranty. If this sounds like something you're interested in, then go check us out. We're streaming on all major platforms, and hell, we're even on YouTube. New episodes out every Friday. I hope to see you there. (laughs) Hey guys, I really hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please rate and review us on iTunes and Spotify. And if you're interested in signing up the Band Builder Academy, use the link in the show notes below and enter the code CONCERTS and you'll receive 10% off. So, until next time, keep rocking. Hey! Hey, what are you guys still doing there? The show's over. It's over. You can go home. Go on. We'll see you next time. We'll be here.